So in this video, we have another problem of classical mechanics, which is that of a bead on a rotating wire or a rod. So there's a particle of mass M, which is free to slide on a thin rod or a wire. The wire is rotating on a plane. So if this is the wire, then this is rotating in a plane with respect to some kind of a origin at some constant angle of velocity omega, obtain the solution of motion for the particle, ignore gravity and friction. So here we can ignore friction, that means this point mass particle is free to slide around uh, above and below this kind of a thin rod. And this, since this thin rod is uh, uh, rotating with some constant angle of velocity, and this point mass particle is fixed to that thin rod, so this point mass particle is also rotating with some kind of a, uh, with the same angle of velocity omega. So what is going to be the nature of the solution for this point mass particle if it is free to slide if on a frictionless surface which is the wire or the rod. So in this video I am going to uh, uh, solve this problem with the Newtonian approach. So the Newtonian approach means that we are going to use the Newton's second law. So the Newton's second law says that whatever force creates some sort of a motion in a particle can be written as mass times the acceleration. However, the problem can be simplified very much by using polar coordinates instead of trying to do the problem in xy coordinates. So let's try to transform this problem in polar coordinates. So in polar coordinates, the force can be written in terms of the radial direction as well as the angular direction. So in polar coordinates, there are two directions. So there is the radial direction, which is along this kind of a wire, and there is the angular direction, which is tangential to the radial direction. So the force can be written in terms of its components along the radial direction, let's suppose R, FR, and its angular direction or tangential direction, let's suppose theta. All right. So if the force can be written in this manner, the acceleration also can be written in terms of polar coordinates. So the standard expression for acceleration which can be written in terms of polar coordinates is given by A is equal to R double dot minus R theta dot whole square R cap plus R theta double dot minus 2R dot theta dot theta cap. What does these symbols mean? So R double dot simply means a second order time derivative of the radial displacement. So a second order time derivative of the radial displacement. So if R is nothing but the radial displacement, if the point mass is R distance from the origin O, let's suppose, then R is the radial displacement and a second order time derivative is R double dot. Also theta dot, what is theta dot? Theta dot is nothing but the angular displacement with respect to time, which is nothing but omega. So this is the same thing as omega, which is the angular velocity. Uh, what is theta double dot? Theta double dot is nothing but the second order time derivative of the angular displacement, which is in uh, a tangential to the radial direction. And theta dot, uh, uh, sorry, r dot here is nothing but the first order time derivative of r. All right, so this is the radial velocity, okay. So this is, this expression is actually a kind of a standard expression for writing the acceleration and polar coordinates. I'm not going to spend time deriving this expression because then again, that's a lengthy sort of a derivation. However, if you take up any standard book in mechanics, you will find that uh, while they're discussing velocity acceleration and all these things, and when they're discussing kinematics, they might have also obtained the expression for acceleration in polar coordinates, which looks exactly like this. So the term in the first uh, uh, bracket, so the coefficient of r cap, this is basically the radial acceleration or acceleration along the radial direction. And the term in the second bracket, uh, uh, the coefficient of theta cap, this is basically acceleration along the tangential direction or the along the direction of the angular displacement. All right. So this is a standard sort of a expression. You should look it up in a, in a book on, of some standard mechanics book if you have not seen this expression before. So now using this expression, it becomes much, much easier to solve this kind of a problem. Because now we can apply the Newton's second law in polar coordinates itself. So if I replace the Newton's second law in polar coordinates itself, so the force term becomes fr r cap plus f theta theta cap, which is nothing but ma. So this becomes m r double dot minus r theta dot square r cap plus m r theta double dot minus 2 r dot theta dot theta cap. Okay, this is the Newton's second law in polar coordinates. Now we can equate the individual terms. So here, f r, the radial force is nothing but m r double dot minus r theta dot square. And the angular force is nothing but m r 
theta double dot minus 2r dot theta dot. Yes. So now uh, we can use any one of these equations. So first of all, we do not know what is the force along the angular direction. However, we do know that the bead is sliding along this rod or wire in a frictionless surface. So since it's a frictionless surface, we can say that the radial force whatsoever is zero. So there is no radial force whatsoever and we can use this equation. So let's suppose this is the equation. Let's suppose A and we're going to use this equation to come up with the equation of motion. So uh, if we use this equation in that case, so the equation number A basically gives us, so FR is nothing but zero because friction is uh, zero along the radial direction. So this gives us the equation MR double dot minus R theta dot whole square is equal to zero or M goes to right hand side becomes zero. You're left with D2R upon DT2 minus R. What is theta dot? Theta dot is nothing but omega. So theta dot is nothing but the angular velocity. It is the change in the angular displacement with respect to time. So theta dot can be written as omega square equals to zero. All right. So this is the final equation that we obtain, which is which is basically an equation of the radial distance of this particle with respect to time. And this is kind of a standard differential equation. All right. So this is an equation of the form of d2y upon dx2 minus some kind of a constant whole square, let's suppose. Uh, y is equal to zero. All right. This is standard differential equation of the form of d2y by dx2 minus c square y is equal to zero. And this equation has a standard solution which looks something like this. Yx is equal to some constant. Let's suppose a e to the power minus ct plus b e to the power ct. So this is x here. All right. A e to the power C minus cx and b e to the power cx all right because i have written this in terms of x so this kind of a differential equation has a standard solution like this i'm not going to go into solving this differential equation you can look it up uh, the solution of this kind of a standard differential equation uh, in a book of mathematics however what i'm going to do here is that so i'm going to say that this has a solution which basically has a radial uh, uh, expression of a displacement so rt is basically equal to a to the power e to the power minus so omega square is a constant here minus omega t plus b e to the power omega t. So this is the solution for this kind of a particle which is restricted to move along some kind of a wire which is revolving uh, with some angular velocity with respect to some origin. All right. In this case, two kinds of situations are possible. So for example, uh, 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 if B is, so you can see here that there, there are two terms involved. First is the exponentially decreasing term and the second is the exponentially increasing term. So case number one, where let's suppose B is equal to zero. All right. If B is equal to zero, in that case, the R, uh, the position is going to be equal to A e to the power minus omega t all right if i apply some kind of an initial condition let's suppose that the position at time t is equal to zero is uh, let's suppose r naught then this equation is simply going to become r naught e to the power minus omega t that means if b is equal to zero then the position is going to move towards the origin so the particle is going to move towards the origin but it is never going to reach the origin in the first place however in the uh, uh, second case case number two where uh, both neither a is equal to zero or b neither b is equal to zero in that case the second term is going to dominate this expression uh, because as you can see the second term is an exponentially increasing term so this is going to move towards infinity with increasing amount of time so the particle is going going to move up outwards in an exponentially increasing way so as you can see here for this particle which is constrained to move along some kind of a rod which is rotating with angular velocity omega this particle's motion is given by this solution where the radial displacement is changing exponentially with respect to time